Hi, this is the advisor with Stacey Chalemi, the founder of the Complete Herbal Guide. And today I have a very special guest that I'm very excited to introduce to you. This is Foss. He is a psychologist who has been in the practice for over four decades. He's the author of Fix Yourself Empowerment Series. In addition, Foss has finished the Fix Your Anxiety Handbook. This is the second installment of the Fix Your Empowerment Series. Force is diverse and compelling as he consistently establishes new and exciting cutting edge counseling programs to pursue professional excellence and professional life enhancement. He has published and researched throughout the years that he has been in this profession. He is an author, a clinical clinical trainer, and a therapist who has worked in this setting. And, and it also he's worked with people that uh, like deaf children. He's worked in prisons and nursing homes. So I am so excited to just talk to you and to, to learn more about you and everything you do. So why don't you tell people a little about yourself and what you do? Thanks. Uh, first, thanks, obviously, obviously, for inviting me on. You know, uh, I've been doing this for a long time. Uh, it's just was my chosen field, but it kind of chose me very early. So I'm doing what I think I was destined to do you know, and I've always thought about that as, you know, you, you come into the world and then, you, you know, you hit that, that period where you say, geez, you know, this is me, this is who I am. And, you know, I'm, my thing is counseling people to be in service of other people. That's why I'm here. So I've been doing this in all different kinds of settings, uh, prisons and uh, cl uh, clinics and uh, working with deaf kids and you name it in the last 33 years, private practice. So, it's been a long ride, but you know what? I'm still doing it. I'm still having a lot of fun with it. Uh, I get up every day looking to, you know, looking forward to uh, being with the people I love to work with. And now, you know, when, uh, a few books later and people are getting the message on a larger basis. So it, it's actually, it, it's all fun again. You know, it's, it, right. it's, it's the old stuff is still there and I still love it. And it's a whole new version of that. And, uh, you know, so, you know, it's one of those things where you, you just keep developing and keep going and keep having fun and people seem to be coming along for the ride. That's, that's good. Yeah. Oh, definitely. And you know what I love is um, the more I read about your stuff and I see how you do things, you're not like the everyday psychologist or therapist. You, you, a lot of times people will try to get the answer out of you and they'll sit there and they'll try to have you take the answer and figure it out for yourself. But many people, I find it starts all in, a lot of times from childhood or a traumatic event and happens in their life and they feel lost. It's like a highway, six lanes, no signs, and they just don't know what to do. Some people repress their emotions and they become numb, but they know that something's not right with themselves. And you break everything down into simplistic steps. You, you take a very complicated issue that everybody goes through in life at some point in their life, and you show them step by step how to find themselves, how to live a happy and productive life, because many people suffer from low self-esteem or they suffer from issues that they just don't know how to find the answers to. And I find that your way of doing things is excellent. So why don't you explain to the audience how you help people find themselves and live that happy and productive life that everybody wants to? You know, it's a great question. I, I have been the person who's always thought, geez, you know, we're going so fast. Everyone wants to get to, first of all, get to a finish line, which really doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. And they want to get there as fast as they can. Right. None of that will ever work. We, we, you know, and, and, and the problem is we are just increasing the pace of our lives. You know, we think it's that we're trying to catch up. What happens is our brains adapt to that fast mode. And now we actually seek it out. We crave that that, 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 that accelerated pace of life and we can't function there. So I just keep telling people, slow down, yes. you know, uh, get, get the stuff out of your life that doesn't have to be there. And let's take it one step at a time, one problem at a time. And let's look at those things. There's no, uh, we have to have it done. People will actually come in and say, you think we'll be done in counseling like six months? And I say, I don't know. Do you think you can go that fast? <laughs> and then they'll just look at me. Now I said, we'll go as fast as we need to go. And I want you to understand that if six months we're good, I'll let you know that. But if we're not, I'm also going to let you know that because my, my uh, responsibility to you is to help you get to where you need to go. And, you know, it's the old story. If you come into counseling, you want, I want to be in business with you long enough to never have to be in business with you again. So I right. want you to get the message. 
and feel good about yourself. Um, you know, so let's slow down. Little steps are actually the biggest way to make it to, to ad address change and growth. It's just, it's simple. Oh, I agree a hundred percent with you. You know, it, people don't realize, but the 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 way to success is to do baby steps. Now, when people come into your office, a lot of times I find, you know, people have desires and fantasies, and then we have reality. And people always, you know, I when I grow up, I want to do this, 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 and this, or I want to be this, and I want to accomplish this. And when this doesn't happen, people become very you know, angry, or they get anxiety, or they get very unhappy with themselves. And they look in the mirror, and they just don't like who they see. And there's their self confidence begins to decrease, because they think they're supposed to be here. But in reality, you know, we can only be here. So when people come into your office and they're very upset because they have low self-esteem because they feel they should be all the way up here, but they're all the way down here. What do you tell them? The first thing I, beside tell, to slow down, I say, stop comparing yourself with someone else. You know, the, and, and, you know, if the very act of comparing oneself says, I don't think I measure up. So I'm looking at that person. Well, when I look there, I'm not going to measure up. Right. So I have three options. I can try to be like them. That's their personal statement. It's not mine, so that won't happen. I can right. try to tear them down, which has become the national pastime. Yes, it has. That doesn't work. Or I can redefine myself and go inside and say, let me start working with the gifts that I have. And we all have them. We yes. all have tremendous gifts. You know, that's not me, uh, you know, blowing smoke at anyone. They're there. But, you know, I always say it's like, it's like when you uh, pile things in your garage forever and you can't get the cars in. Now you want to, Get, get to all that good stuff, you know, but what you have to do is get all the junk out of the way first. So right. you know, that's what we've done in our lives. We've piled all this crap in there. And you know, I just tell them, let's one step at a time, let's take all this stuff away. The first thing often is it, it's not advancement by, by giving them all new concepts. It's advancement by perjury, by, by getting them to purge all the junk out of their lives. Let's remove all this first because that's your anchor. That's what's holding you down. Right. Let's get your bad habits out of there. Let's let's get you to talk to yourself differently. Stop saying I can't. Of course you can. You just haven't tried yet. Right. Now, how do you get how do you get that junk out of your life? And how do you know what to throw away and not throw away? It's like when you're cleaning out a closet in your bedroom, you want to keep everything and you and you don't know what to throw away, what's junk, what's not junk. How do you decipher the important stuff versus the stuff that you need to just get out of your life, say that's the past, and just focus on the good stuff? How do you get that junk out of your life? And how do you decipher what's junk and what's not junk? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. When people start talking about their lives, uh, what I'll, I, I, I can see it right away, but I want them to see, are yeah. you happy when you talk about that thing that's in your life? Mm -hmm. uh, does it make you feel good? You know, it's right, that, right. to use the, the uh, colloquialism, but the, is it positive energy? Does it bring into your life? Does it bring, make you feel good? Does, is it productive? Is it serving some purpose for you that makes sense? When I ask those questions, then, you know, they can quickly go to that. It's, you know, so it's like when you, you get into your closet and you say, there's that old sweater. Right. I right. love it. And I've had it for all these years. And, you know, and then you put it on and it has lost its shape. <laughs> and uh, maybe there's that little <laughs> hole over there that you refuse to look at. Right. And then you put it on and say, and I always say, okay, you put it on. Would you wear it out to some special event? And they look at me and say, well, no, it's a house sweater. And I say, do you have other sweaters? Yeah. Well, yeah, I do. So if you put this on, what you're doing is really putting on a whole lot of old memories and old crap that goes with it. So why don't you think about maybe living life without it for a while? you know right. you don't have to purge live live without it for a while see how it is if it if it's not something that you know you really need you know we try to unclutter and you know we just keep on gathering stuff in yeah you know, whether the stuff are objects or the people in our lives that don't work for us we just keep on bringing everything in yeah and, you know so in, in a funny way of looking at it in in some respect we're all hoarders just a little bit right and so we try to clean that off first. And, you know, it's interesting when, when I do this, they haven't made any advances. They just taken things away. They say, I think I've really done well so far. I said, gee, and you haven't done anything to move forward yet. Have you <laughs> we really said, what we did is just cut the anchors that, you know, you're trying to swim, swim out to the boat here and the anchors, the, uh, 
your anchor is on your foot, you're not going to make any progress. Let's just get that off first. Right. I feel like when you take out all the junk, you finally feel like a sense of freeness. You can focus. You can look at your life in a yeah. more clearer way. You know, life is lighter. Absolutely. And Absolutely. I think, isn't it then when you start to have to decide in those short term and long term goals and start figuring out now I can I can see my life from a better aspect and now I have to move forward. And how does that person move forward? Do they start creating short term and long term goals? Do they start do they start a, a certain pattern or a certain way of thinking or certain steps that you suggest? I you know that's where the way counseling works for me is I'm a little more directive in the beginning. And mm -hmm. unfortunately, what happens with people, with other counselors, is they don't get directive in the in the beginning because they're afraid of you know losing the client or not having right. the rapport. The client comes in dependent. The client comes in confused, conflicted. They're looking for someone. So you're really saying, okay, let's start here, mm -hmm. and then at, they'll learn how you did that as we're going through this, and then eventually they'll start bringing things in. Well, you know, we did this and that was great. We got rid of that. We added this. I've always thought about this. Then I can say, well, that's great. Let's apply some of the principles we used in the early stages right. and help you do that. So you're teaching them tools, techniques, and strategies, and then yeah. hoping that they'll understand them clear yeah. and then yes. apply them to the rest of the parts of their well, lives. Yeah, the word I use is processes. I, I call it a process way of life. Learning the processes that are involved. You know, it's very simple. It, 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 the analogy I always use is if, if I have a business and I'm getting older now and I have a son that's coming up and I say, well, I want him to take over the business. I don't bring him into the executive suite. I right. say, get out there on the floor with the other guys, get your, get your hands dirty, learn every aspect of the business. Those are the processes. Right. What's happened in life is we're not, our teachers maybe weren't so good. We didn't want to learn whatever may happen. We're traumatized early, whatever it may be. We didn't learn the process. So, so now we're trying to be happy and productive in our lives. And we don't have those processes to help, to, to help us to, to guide us along. There's no roadmap for us to get there. Right. And we're seeing that a lot with the young people today. Um, we let them have their way to a little bit too often. And yes. now they don't know the, about the processes. So when we do try to teach them, they resist and they're trying to do things their way. And there's a lot of failure. So we're seeing a lot more young people with depression and anxiety and substance abuse and suicide and all these kinds of things. So I just want to back them down. I'm not, I don't want to solve their problems. I want to give them all those processes, all those tools, as you call them, to help them move ahead so they can do it for themselves, regardless of what comes up in their lives. Now, you talk a lot about empowerment. How yeah. do people how do people get that empowerment? How do, because everybody has it, but people don't recognize it or they don't think they're worthy of empowerment or they don't think that they they they're just not aware at all that they have empowerment. They look at other people and they look at other people, how strong they are on, the, you know, and they don't think they're capable of having that empowerment. But how do you help people recognize that they have the capabilities and that empowerment is inside them? How do they release that empower? Yeah. You know, we talked about the first step is being, let's get the junk out of your life. Right. Once we're doing that, now we're back to those processes. If I say, you know, I'd like to maybe um, learn how to dance. I can't dance. I'm clumsy. I have two left <laughs> feet. I have all this stuff. And I'm saying, well, you just decided that. You maybe you maybe you watch the, the shows on TV, Dancing with the Stars, whatever it may be, and, you, and you're saying I can't do what they do. And I'll say you are correct right now. You can't. But who says you can't learn to be? You right. Need to go get the information. You may have to, let, let's look at that and say, gee, maybe you have to get in better physical condition because you're going to be doing that maybe for an hour, a constant movement. You don't do that now. You Maybe you're going to take dancing lessons and learn all those steps that those people already have. You're going to do that. You're going to stay committed to a program that you know uh, physically helps you keep up with that. You're going to decide what kind of dance you want to do. You'll notice that when you watch those dancers on TV, they're not all doing hip hop or classic or whatever it may be. Yeah. They have some yeah. type of a specialty. You're going to break this thing down into all its components, see what it, what it takes to, in order to do that, and then take them one at a time. And you will get there. Why would you not? Right. Uh, you know, right. we watch those shows. 
And we see some people that, you know, my God, you say, that's not a dancer. And, and then they are graceful on the floor. What they didn't say is I can't. And that's really the second part of that. You're going to get all the steps in order to get there, learn all the things you have to do. But then you're going to say, I can, nothing is going to stop me. I may not be the most pronounced uh, dancer in the world, but I will be certainly capable of doing this. And if I go to, I don't care, uh, a club, a dance, uh, a wedding, whatever, I get out on the floor, I know I can feel real good about what I do. There's the confidence. Confidence right. doesn't have to be grandiose and conquering the world. It just has to say, I was able to do what I wanted to do. Once I get there, I have more decisions if I want them. Do I want to take it farther? Do I want to join a dance company? Do I want to uh, have a dance partner and go out and, 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 you know, do all these different kinds of things? Do I want to apply to be on one of those TV shows? That all comes later. What are the fundamentals? We right. broke it down to steps. That's all we did. And we got efficient at it. You know, I, I counsel a lot of people and I counsel some actors and some professional people, and they'll all say the same thing. You know, you guys look at us and see the finished product and say, why can't I be like that? It's that if you would look at the, di the days we starved and we got used and we got kicked around and we had to learn all those things, you'd be surprised what we had to do in order to get here. You're just looking at the finished product now after maybe 10 or 15 years of us you know, getting killed in order to do this. And uh, you That's know what all. I find is that, you know, our society, especially our younger generation, they look at these people, they mentor them, but they don't realize that they're not like that behind closed doors, that they're these not. people are completely just like us. And, mm -hmm. you know, you see, you see people, you know, when they go in front of the camera, it's hours of preparation. You know, they, like you said, it takes months and months, you know, of getting kicked around to get the finished product. And when people compare themselves to them and they're like, oh, I'm not as good good at that one and then they fall into depression or they get angry it's you know they're getting a misconception our society is given a misconception of you know what these people are truly like and these people should you know maybe come out of the woodwork sometimes and show them the, their real selves so our new society will understand is what you see is not exactly what is really there it's an it's entertainment you know these are mentors but they're in the entertainment world to entertain you they're not it's not reality in a sense well, it, what that finished product isn't with the steps to get there. Now, I remember um, when I published the first book and, a, and we were doing an interview it was for PBS, first television interview I'm doing. And I was fortunate an actor was on, on the, 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 one of the people being interviewed, a guy by the name of Daniel Roebuck. Uh, and he was nice enough to actually endorse the, the new book. And he, so we're, I'm, I'm going on second, but we, they decided to start it from the car. You're going to walk in from your car and it was set in a diner. It's called counterculture. <laughs> so you're going to walk from your car and you're going to get into the diner. So I'm thinking, okay, the camera will be set and I'll walk into my car from my car and we'll go in the diner. But they, I think it was six or seven different takes just for me to walk to the <laughs> diner. And I said, we got inside. I'm sitting with Daniel and I'm saying, is that normal? And he said, yeah. He says, what you see is the finished product. He says, sometimes you'll see a five minute take uh, and we did, it, it took us 20 minutes to get there. And, you know, <laughs> it's the day that starts at five in the morning and at one at night we're finishing and they say, okay, see y'all at six and you rush <laughs> home, do something to get to bed and you wake up and you go through all this stuff. And that's just after you have arrived to be able to get those jobs. Right. In order to right. get there, you're taking garbage and whatever you're an extra, uh, you're you're the guy, some or the or the person. Someone says, "Move along, I have to get through." And you know, and people are nice, and they're not a nice. A po my point is, you have to be consistent and tenacious enough to say, "Okay, I'm going to do whatever it takes to get there." Right. You know, you're doing the same thing I'm doing. You promote books. You go on this television show. You go on that thing. It takes a long time. So the first book we did so much ourselves. Okay, now I have a publicist and you pay that person to do things. So now you're right. working harder to pay that person so that you, <laughs> they can go out and do those things for you. Right. You know, so 
when, when I'm sitting down before people, they're saying, well, look at what you did and you wrote the book and now you're getting all these things. And I'm saying, oh, geez, wait a minute. You know, when I, before I wrote the first book, I spent an entire year learning the public and publishing industry before I even started. Right. Because right. I, I didn't want to learn it afterwards. And say, oh my God, I blew that one. And I had yeah. to start over. So, you know, now we're, we're three, four or five years into it. And we, now we have that website that has endorsements on it and we're we've got a you know a whole program and we're going to do six or seven books in this empowerment series it didn't just happen and it's right. still at a point where it's in development like every one of those people they're seeing you know you know you're, you get the movie star he still he or she still auditions for the part right Their publicist right. and agent have to get to the producers and say we'd like you to do our you know let our person take the part. Well, then they go in and do the readings and they still get turned down for the parts. Great right, part. I would right. love to have it. It turned out to be a great movie. I wasn't in it, and, you know? So you're, you have to be, you know, you have to have that thick skin because it yes. never stops. And the higher you want to go, the more time you have to put into it, the harder you have to work and the more you have to be willing to get kicked around because it's going to happen. And if you're willing to do that, what says you can't do what they did? Because that's all those people did. Right. Now, how does a person build their self-esteem, their self-determination, and develop that strength that you're talking about? Is there things they can do, exercises, um, techniques, or processes from home that could help them develop that thicker skin? Because thicker skin comes from, from either things you go through in life or, you know, maybe there's things you could do to actually help strengthen you. So when you do get out there, you're not as beaten down. Well, think about what I just said, because again, another great question. Every day, if you get up and say, okay, this is my goal today. I am mm -hmm. doing these things. Right. I am not, this is the first thing I tell everyone, stop with the negative language. Yes. Stop mm -hmm. telling yourself, I can't. Stop looking in the mirror and saying, I don't measure up. Right. Don't look at anyone else and see what they're doing. You know, and, and having counseled people in those professions, when they come in and they talk to me and I say, oh, yeah, that you're not so pretty, are you? You know, you're not uh, that person who's so empowered. Everyone loves you because when you get home and take it all off. Right. You're still that same person. You still have to talk to yourself positively. So yes. for me, I get up in the morning. This isn't what I do now. This is what I did in order to get where I am is get up right. in the morning and say, whatever happens, I am going to keep my head positive. Now it's going to happen. Me saying that didn't eliminate the fact that it's going to happen. I will be challenged during the day instead of react. And this is a one of the initial uh, chapters in the book, I always call it I over E, intellect over emotion. Get your brain into the, into the picture before your emotions react, because your emotions are either high or low, guaranteed. Right. right. So get them out, look at the thing. Something happened and it took you out of your game and you say, okay, that happened, but I'm going to get right back on track because the, that's the only option I have if I want to be happy. Right, exactly. So, so I make a decision in the morning. I am going to do this. These are the things I make a list every night. Tomorrow I'm doing these things. And, 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 and you know, and uh, I, I, I get up in the morning and I have that list and I start going after it one at a time. Two things, well, three things will happen. Either I'll go through it all. It's been great. Or I will be challenged to the point where the whole thing gets knocked out of whack. Right. Or I get it all done and I think, Oh, this is great. I can relax. And then something else hits and it's this big thing. I know it's going to happen. It's right. sort of like leaving your house and saying, well, I have to drive over here, busy highway, busy roads. And if I make the decision that I should get there and no one's going to pull out in front of me, get yeah. on my tail, uh, do, you know, put that middle finger out the window, whatever. I have no control over that. And it's probably going to happen. If I say that before I leave, I know those right. things are going to happen. I'm going to react to this in control, not let it get to me. I know these things are going to happen. I will make this decision about how to deal with it. And over and over, I keep doing that. It stops. I, I leave the it. house. I, it's, it's a simple thing. It's get your mind off the destination. Right. The destination will happen if you take care of all the business every day. And the only way you can do that is by saying, 
I got this today. All these little steps, I'm going to do that. And when I do it, I feel confident. The day's over and I say, geez, you know, maybe you say your prayers at the end of the day and you say, geez, Lord, you know, I had all these things and I got them out of the way one at a time. Right. You know, uh, yeah. that's how you do this. And for some people, they'll include meditation to help slow down. Uh, they'll include prayer. They'll what whatever it is, exercise, you know, change your diet around. Right. Uh, put healthy things in your body. Get away from the comfort foods, which poison you. Exactly. You think that's great. And they're eating up all your energy and they're, they're clogging your mind. Get away from that. Yes. Get, the accelerants get that garbage. And I have no, ex- I, I don't know how you, you, when I get up in the morning and I'm having a few cups of tea, it's always nice herb teas that calm me down, not rev right. me up. Yeah. Because if I'm all revved up, the only thing I'm going to do is get a crash point and, and become dependent on that garbage. Exactly. So I can get all that out of my mind. So, yeah. you know, I, I have a diet that has no garbage in it. Uh, and, and I love what I eat. I mean, it's not that, gee, I, people will say, that's what you have to do because they don't have the ice cream and the cakes and, yes. uh, you know, those, uh, the energy drinks and the sodas and all that, that stuff is killing you. Get, oh, yeah. purge yourself of all that. Be healthy. I, I feel like people, my life has changed completely by doing that, but go ahead, keep going. I love what you know, you're saying. I, I tell people, um, if you're, we're physical organisms first. Do you think you're going to plan something and go there and your body's dragging behind? You have already you already have one shot against you. If you're right. there now, don't let that uh, distract you. Your first plan may be, I have to get my body healthy first. I need to get off these things, get the comfort foods out of my life, stop eating in front of the television, those kinds of things. Because right. no, right. one, no one goes in there and eats vegetables in front of TV, no. eats <laughs> chips and, cake and cookies and all that stuff. So get that stuff out of, put an exercise plan and you don't have to go out and, and, and be, you know, someone that's a, you know, a buff. All you have to do is get your body used to movement a lot, right. you know, and then, and then develop it as you go. It's like anything else. Start at the beginning, introductory steps, develop it as you go. It works. It, it, I love it. And it's very simple, you know, get the garbage out, start focusing, you know, have you know, just focus on, on, you know, believing in yourself and just, you know, and just getting in the, you know, setting your goals and getting them done and just keep repeating it over and over and you'll see a change in yourself, you know, and believing that you can do it, you know, and telling yourself that. And, you know, and also I saw that you're, you're coming out with a new book and it's called uh, how to fix the anxiety handbook. Fix yourself, the, the fix your anxiety handbook. Yes. Now, why did you focus on that? Why did you focus specifically on anxiety in this in this next series book? You know, that's where you look at it and say, here's all the various books. And I mean, have four or five, five, I think, more lined out. But I looked at where the nation is right now, where mm-hmm. the world is. And the anxiety going into the pandemic was bad enough. But what's happening now is, you know, and you and you can look at all the various signs, pharmaceutical um, uh, Profits are up for anxiety medica- medications. Yes. Uh, and, uh, people are drinking more. Uh, yes. the, the use of marijuana just to deal with anxiety is extreme. So I yes. looked at it and said, you know, why don't we look at some natural ways to deal with this? You can really take this out of your life. And, it, and it's right on, along with what we're talking about. It's that, that thing in my head where instead of saying, gee, I have anxiety. It's a condition. I can beat it. I have to do some things. No, I have anxiety for the rest of my life. I've always had it. I'm never going to beat this thing. It's hopeless. And there we are again. Yes. Power gone because I have just given in and said, you know, I, I, I can't do this anymore. I, I'll, mm-hmm. I'll, I can't work. I can't leave the house. I mean, it gets to those points. And, and now you decide you're not strong. You're not, you, you're not going to be empowered. You're weak. Right. You're not. Right. It's not who you are. It's a condition you have. And anyone who's had a physical condition, once they identify that that's the condition, not who they are, they can now say, okay, what do I have to do to either alleviate or get to the point where this condition no longer gets in the way of everything that I want to do? Anxiety is just another condition. hundred percent. It has its variables. It has it, 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 the, the parameters that make it function. I just, I want people to stop. I, I call it the beast. I want people to stop feeding the beast. Right. You know, and then once they understand that, 
it's, it's a, just another step into getting yourself more powerful. When you do that, now you set some goals and you're ready to go. Now, what kind of, um, what, what do you think when someone suffers from anxiety and their life feels overwhelmed, what kind of advice do you give them? Like, how do you, what's the process that helps them instead of going to all these unhealthy sources to try to treat their anxiety, what can they do at home to help restore their happiness and their productivity without having to have the, the amount of anxiety they're dealing with? The first thing I tell people is uh, don't keep it inside and, and, and keep it to yourself. Anxiety, like depression, creates a very lonely person. Yes, definitely. And, and, and no one understands. Now, I get this all the time. Well, you don't understand what it's like to have what I have. <clears throat> and, I, and then I'll say, well, good. Make me understand it. Talk to me about it. Um, so I want them to do that. I want them to learn how to slow down. I want them to remove anything. You know, I can tell you how many people come into my office with anxiety. And I say, how do you start your day? Mm -hmm. Two, three cups of coffee. I said, well, you have anxiety, right? You're putting an accelerant into your body. Anxiety is in essence, your, 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 your nervous system on steroids, so to speak. Exactly. It blows everything up. So why would you feed that? How much yeah. sugar is in your diet? You know, let, let's look at how, what your schedule is like. Right. You know, people who have anxiety don't sleep well. They right. go to bed at three and four in the morning. They get up at nine o'clock. They're all over the place. So we, we have to get to that physical part first. And that's what I tell people. Anxiety before, you know, anxiety hits the body. Then it, the emotions grab it. Then the intellect gets compromised. So I say right to the foundation. We have to get you physically okay. That's our first thing. Right. And, uh, I, you know, they'll come in the office and they're on four medications. And I say, what are they for? And they, you know what they all answer me? I don't know. Anxiety, I think. Oh, I gosh. Say, you ask your doctor why he's prescribing that? <laughs> so now what they've done is relinquish control of their life, assign it to a, another person who yes. prescribes pills for a living. It has they, no clue what they're going through. And they just, have, because they didn't, they, they just said, I'm, I'm having this. And, 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 and the medical model today has doctors seeing people somewhere around seven minutes. Now, yes, I don't know yes. what you do in seven minutes. You can't so, do anything. Of no, course. Right. You get the basics and you say, okay, well, you know, I have this. So why don't we take this? Well, they go in of course, as drugs and alcohol and everything work in our body, we build the tolerance up. So Two, three months later, they go back and say, this isn't working anymore. So well, let's, you know what, it's time to increase the dose. Right. So we increase the dose. Well, that wasn't working. We should add this. Yes. And the pharmaceutical companies, you know, I, I keep telling people, they're not selling you the drug in that commercial. They're selling you a drug culture. They yes. want you to say, these drugs, it will enhance our lives. And that's what they, they, they show you people dancing and they're wonderful. And they're yeah. And all happy what the drug does. No, it doesn't. It gives you more, actually more symptoms and more <laughs> yes, problems. And then you go back to the doctor and then the doctor gives you another medication for those symptoms, plus right. the condition you have. And then right. they have a pharmacy in their, in their bathroom. Exactly. And if you think about it at the end of the commercial, they give you all the side effects that are going to harm you because they're told they had to do that. And you go and you go get on the medication anyway, right? Something right. isn't clicking here. So I want them to come in and uh, be able to start working physically. The second thing is, if you have anxiety, and you can't, you know, you can't get a hold on it, go seek a counselor out. Yeah, get yourself into a position where you say, I've got a safe place to go. And, and people, you know, can't leave the house, they say, well, we do online stuff. I'm not a huge fan of it, but mm -hmm. I'll do that with people, maybe who are a distant, you know, they'll, they'll right, find me right. on the website and say, well, gee, I live in, you know, in Utah and I, 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 I'm not driving or flying in to see you once a week. Right. So we can do that. But if, there, if you can get to a local counselor, sit down face to face, go do that. So that person gets to know you, you uh, define a safe place. You talk yeah. to that person all about themselves and they start helping you without getting you to the psychiatrist who, or the, or the doctor who gave you their, you know, their, their five or seven minutes charged you $150 that see in two months. Right. And meanwhile, right. You, you, you've got anxiety because you've been on their waiting room for two hours. because they <laughs> That's very true. 
Now, what do you tell people, you know, in the, right now inflation is up, people are struggling at work, they're trying to make ends meet, they're having trouble paying the bills. And a lot of times, you know, their life finances and their work could cause them stress alone. Even their job can cause them stress. When you have to go to a working environment and you have to go there every day and you're getting stressed from your work environment, is there a suggestion or something they could do to ease their stress level or anxiety level? Yeah. I, again, uh, you're back to the basics. Slow okay. down a bit because the, 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 uh, once it gets to the point that the stress level's up, it's emotions that are grabbing it. And, and gotcha. usually when we look at something and all of us, me included, we look at something, we see this little piece that starts real small. And all of a sudden it got real big. Well, it, it didn't get there. Our emotions blew it up because it's it, it attached to whatever past uh, concerns we have uh, that, that keep coming up every day. But now we're what ifing ourselves. Well, this is going to happen. You know, we would now play the scenario out in our heads and we're saying it's really bad. And when we sit down and talk about it with someone, we say, okay, yes. it wasn't that bad. Right. You really have to first, and that's the first step in this is to look at it and say, how is it, how does it actually exist? Because all those emotional things, I'm not going to be able to do anything. They, they kind of don't exist. How, how do I deal with that at all? I right. want to see what's really there. Gotcha. So you, know, talk, you talk it over with someone. And, and, and uh, hopefully that someone isn't someone who's also emotional. You know, you try it with family members, if not a friend, if not, go to a counselor. Right. And right. let them just hear you. And that's what I'll always say with people. Let's start looking at that thing. And I start asking questions. And I ask a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, you said that. Well, how did that relate to that? And tell right. me more right. about this. And, and, and people will come in and say, oh, the first two sessions you listened a lot. Are we doing some things? And I say, yeah, now that you told me everything, now watch us go. Now you right. said this, and I think you're doing this. Do you see it happening? Yeah, but I don't know how to stop it. And I said, that's fine. I do. <laughs> and, and, and we'll get there. You know? That's excellent. Um, if, if you can get if you, and, and advice for, for, uh, for uh, seeking out a counselor, get someone who's dynamic, mm -hmm. who doesn't uh -huh you to death. And at right. the end, say, we're, we're making wonderful progress. Uh, you should leave the counselor's office saying, you know, I'm that kind of got all this stuff going and I'm not sure, or I got a little uncomfortable, but we left there with a plan. Okay, right. Yeah, you're uncomfortable. Do just, and I'll say this to my people, just do this this week. When right. I leave my right. office, there is always a plan. I like that. Always. It always yeah. should be a plan. I, I like that. And it might be something small. You know, uh, the agoraphobic, I might say, just go out on your front porch for five seconds. That's all I want you to do this week. And, th and they'll say, well, that's not a whole lot. I said, no, yes, it is, because you just crossed the boundary. That's right. huge. Go out on your porch. The next time I might say, be on the porch for a minute, or at least as long as you can go. Go out there and breathe. Take a few deep breaths out there. And before I know it, I have them sitting on their front porch. Now we might be talking about taking the walk. The walk right. may only be around the yard if there's a yard. Uh, it may just be up and down the sidewalk, whatever it may be. If it's an apartment building, it may be they're going up and down the, the, the steps, whatever. Just go be someplace else and we'll start building that because then I can get them to the point that they're willing to leave the house and go to a counselor. That's you know? excellent. So I like that. all those little things. It's a plan when they leave. You know, when I say that, you know, you and I might say, well, I'm just going to go stand on the front porch. Sounds small. When, I, when they leave, the emotional drag from getting to that, from the living room to that front porch right. would be huge. There's, oh, yeah. that, that boundary is, is an invisible line. But to them, it's, it's a five foot cement wall. And, and I it, like that. You're, you're not telling them what to do. You're giving them simple little goals, little things, all. and it's leading them to a bigger thing that's going to help them at the end. Yeah. And the other thing I do with people is if they said it, I can't do this. I got it. I don't say, sure, you can. I don't go there. I, I, I don't give them false hope. I right. say, OK, you say that's the way it is right now. Let's start looking at the steps we have to take to do that. Now, I validated their fear. That's right. OK. I, even if in my mind, I look and say, well, you know, some of that's irrational. I don't tell them that because everyone else already has. Right. Everyone else will say, come on, that's ridiculous. Or you can do this. Why are you not? I don't do any of that because they've heard it all. Right. Did you tell me you can't leave the house. Okay. I got that. 
let's see if we can do some little steps. You can't get on the porch, stick your head out the window to start. Whatever we have to do, let's start, but let's make some little steps. That's all. I like it. That's great advice. I, you know, I'm so glad you came on our show today. You provided such wonderful advice. And again, you made it so under, you know, you help people so they can understand the process like you talk about in your books. And I think that's very important because, you know, people need guidance and the way you break it down is wonderful. And I'm so glad you came on the show to share your knowledge and to help people understand how they can get from one point to the next point. Now, is your new book out yet on anxiety? We're hoping to have that done end of the month into September. Uh, We're doing the pre-promotional stuff now. So we're getting ready to start the the whole publishing process. Um, The the, uh, initial book is there and that's, I said, that that, that establishes the the, the foundation. So um, people can go and and check that one out. What you're gonna find uh, is that the first book has 36 chapters, all different kinds of problems. The anxiety book, 21 chapters, all different things that relate to, to anxiety. At the end of every chapter, chapter is only five, six pages long. I did that on purpose. So I'm not <laughs> overloading people with right. this huge chapter they get stuck in. Yes. I, after I give, I capsulize the, the necessary information, then comes the take action section of every chapter has one. And here are the steps that you can take to address the the problem in that chapter. I think that's the way it's supposed to be done. Help should be actionable. Help should be something people can measure in themselves. Say, I'm doing this. I'm getting it. I can see it. Here's the steps and I'm doing it. So that's kind of the way that I do things. If that's what people are looking for, then my my program's good for you. If not, maybe someone else's is. But I, I like things to be actionable for people. No, I think that's a great approach. You know, when I write my books, I make small chapters just like you and I make it very actionable because people don't want to be overwhelmed with words. They want it very simple yes. and to the point. So that's a that's a great approach. Now, where can people find you? The, the, the easiest place is my website. It's my name, fostregero.com. Uh, when you get there, the whole website is dedicated to the books, the program. Uh, you'll get some excerpts from the book so you can actually see how things are written. Uh, does this work for me? That type of thing. All the interviews are there. So, you know, you want to see what I said about whatever topic it may be. They're all there. Uh, and there's a contact link. And I'm very good about getting back to people. If someone has a question and they uh, get to me and say, well, what about this? By all means, you know, I'll get back to them and answer that for them. That's excellent. I, I love it. And, you know, also, if you are you on any of the social platforms, can people find you, you anywhere? You can find me everywhere. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, you know, <laughs> you know how they make us do all those things. Yes. <laughs> They're all uh, there. All right. Awesome. That is great. Thank you so much for coming today. Thank you for everything you do. And I love talking to you today. And, you know, this is something that could, you know, really help a lot of people. So once again, thank you for everything you've done. And is there anything else you'd like to tell the audience before you go? You know what? To close up, again, I reiterate the same thing. You've got everything inside you. You haven't learned how to find that yet. And that's what we're, we're all teaching. Learn how to access what's inside you. Stop looking outside of you. Stop comparing and envying other people. Never tell yourself you can't. Uh, tell yourself you can, but you just have to break it down into the small steps that you're able to accomplish. And one after another, don't worry about the destination, one after another, if you accomplish those steps, that destination is gonna become reality. You just have to be willing to do the work. That's all. Excellent advice. Thank you so much, Foss. It's been a pleasure having you on my show and I hope to have you on sometime in the future. Thank you. And I would love that. I think it's been a great experience. I, you know, And uh, anytime you need me, you know where I am. Thank you so much. Have a great day. You too, God bless.